as always. What? Yes! Why would you ask me this? Hey everybody, we are back with another fireside chat. It's me, Natalie, and Evan. And I, while waiting for Evan today, just discovered something incredible about my phone case that I would like to show everybody. Yes? It picks uh, up the green <laughs> screen. So it's see through. It has become a ghost phone. <laughs> as you can see, pretty amazing. There, yeah, that's all. I just <laughs> It's good. Thank you. Thank it's you good. very much. Uh it's no, a, it's a I mean, just, of our I wanted to start the stream cuz I didn't want you laughing at me without <laughs> streaming. The, uh, without streaming my hysterical laughter. It, it was just the Evan show. Just last like, week. Just this. <laughs> yeah. Me sitting here be just like, facing hey, this camera. This is what's happening. Confessional. <laughs> what did you? What terrible sins did you confess while I, I was away? You'll have to watch it because Damn. I I actually did talk about like how hard it is to separate yourself from creative ideas. That okay? I'm I'm legitimately interested. I'm I don't legitimately think interested. I said in that anything topic. really new to you, but <laughs> I uh, I just was talking about you know it's it's hard not to take it personally mm -hmm. when something that came out of your brain yeah is not right right oh yeah <laughs> or or correct or the best uh, possible iteration of a thing yeah, yeah. and so that was For it sure. there you've seen it <laughs> right. I, no, that's I, the the summary of the 40 minute it, video yeah. that i have just noticed that the side of my hair also just oh very have, good yeah i have a ghost bit of a temples ghost. now i think <laughs> you have ghost I think we need to maybe dial back the we green might, screen. Look at the edge of my head. No, you're definitely okay. fading out of reality there. That's fine. Oh, I think <laughs> we'll, fine. We'll, adjust, we'll adjust the opacity, I think, for <laughs> next time. It'll be it'll be fine. I think the uh, it doesn't quite have no know how to deal with the flames. Like I think oh, the yeah. yeah, I think the flames oh, yeah. are quite yeah, the, that's I mean the flames are great too. though. They're excellent. Yeah, that's why I chose this, is, this background. This is one of my favorite up. favorite moments in the in the game as it exists in its present form. Um when we have the, <laughs> the fire mugu like officially able to like rain destruction on this area that right. you haven't gotten in the, the the flame particle effects are pretty much my favorite. If thing. you get Wayne here next week. Yes. Uh, I my request as a okay. as a long time listener <laughs> yeah. is First time that, caller. that you talk about the five types of mugu with him. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Are because we we've settled on five? He's got five. He's got five. All yeah. right. And yeah, it's worth checking out. All right. So All right. he should talk to you because you know we've seen what these guys can do. Mm -hmm. There are more. There, there are, are more, more very coming. exciting, and and so he has the reveal, and I'm not going to steal that from him. But, no, that uh, that can be that can be all Wayne's next week. That's what you need to put in. Okay, so now you have a uh, now you're looking forward to something next week. Oh, we got a oh, we got a couple of comments. Look, it looks speaking, like fire is coming of out Wayne. of Evan's ears. <laughs> Did he eat you. a cartoon chili pepper? <laughs> it doesn't not look like fire is coming out of your ears, right? No, now. true. It, yeah, mm -hmm. which is the best part for me to. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's that's it, <laughs> the best. That's pretty. <laughs> Somebody please screenshot that. Oh my god, I almost died. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, um, <laughs> so right. hey, it's live streaming in any kind of reason. Oh my god, I just flushed. That was so funny. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Holy cow, I'm like a Polaroid of emotions. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, what do you, you want to talk the, about? Come on, you can't just throw it to me. <laughs> I know, that's true. Like that's that. not Here, fair. I'll throw it. Uh, sure, I'll catch. All right. uh, <laughs> I want to talk about mm -hmm. what we might be in. I, we might be in a bit of a funk on what, like, we've been so busy with stuff mm -hmm. that we might be in a bit of a marketing funk. I feel like. And I feel like that's yeah. I feel like that's not. And I only say that unfair. about. We we've got something that we're doing mm -hmm. and it's not changing. And I right. feel like we yeah. gotta be mixing it up. Did we you had, hear yeah. this morning? Uh -huh. Victoria told me, "Oh yeah, terrarium. That's always in my feed." She says, "Like that's great." So I guess she's one of the ones you're targeting. I guess it must be because it's every it's day working. we're spending about a dollar to get her attention. <laughs> a dollar to get the same person. Um, yeah, I I agree that it's time to switch it up. Um, like you said, I think that there's been like. And it's been great and super fun for me to be like 
So there's always a thing that we're doing like right now immediately. Like, oh, yeah. hey, guess what we're doing today? Completely rebuilding the press kit, it turns out. <laughs> yeah. <So laughs> For that's... example. Yes. So which is which great and fun. Or like, you oh, should look hey, at the press kit. It's, you should look at the press kit. It's a work it looks, of art. It looks very good. I want to shout out to um, our uh, character artist, Maggie. Uh, or Maddie McDougall, who everybody is familiar with from her amazing streams for like rendering out some very high quality gifts on a very short <laughs> turnaround. Um, but yeah, so, but I feel like the last several weeks of our lives have sort of been like, okay, we got to get like this application in, like, or this yeah. thing has changed and we have to, and everybody's yeah. um, in a very good way, everybody's really like thrown in and come together and like gotten over the next. Um, kind of most immediate hurdle or or you know the the fire that is burning most brightly and immediately um and i feel like now uh i mean i might not characterize it as a funk i might say more like a holding pattern yes and that's fair and i apologize i didn't mean to (laughs) i know i'm not definitely not taking it personally it's for the first time it was just like what are we doing well the same thing we did Right, yeah. so maybe it's time to like move some stuff around a little bit. So we we have uh, to kind of like pull the veil back a tiny bit. Um, we've been sort of running um, a little bit of a marketing f- campaign on uh, Twitter and Facebook and Google AdWords to sort of um, start experimenting with different potential like both in terms of like copy and images and, and search results, kind of like feeling out what people are interested in and associating with Terrarium. And um, so far, like the, uh, you know, if the if the targeting is working on some people, great, but maybe it's time to like mm-hmm. cast that net a little bit broader or retool those things a little bit because we, we may have learned sort of what we were um hoping to i think one of the interesting success stories about the the twitter campaign we've been running anyway is um the fact that uh game develop other developers are quite interested and that's that's for sure one of the sort of pockets that we've been seeing um the most like follower growth in mm-hmm. um we're closing on on 500 really yeah we're we're like we we're just talking about 400 yeah we're like four something we're over 450 now yeah, yeah we had yeah Weren't you just celebrating 400? Yeah, like, we're over 450 now. Oh I'll show you God. later. Okay. Um, so that's great, I think, and is showing right. that we're gaining a bit of momentum. But as we're sort of right. closing in between 400 and 5, um, we're really starting to uh, notice that like the greatest follower base that we're gaining is other other devs because a lot of our a lot of our content, um, I think by design, has been focusing on like look at this cool thing that we're building. This is how we're building it. Like this is the mm-hmm. iteration of our art. This is the iteration of our code. This is what um, you know uh, a, a three animation looks like from you know sort of the first wireframe up until like the completed thing, which I think is fascinating. Um, and I think that most other devs also find like pretty yeah. interesting because everybody's you know um, quite curious about how other people do that kind of work. Um, so I think we've been having success there, but I think possibly that success there is something we should be reaching beyond now into like mm-hmm. what are potential players specifically and exclusively right. right interested in. And I think that that's, that's something I want to, um, I think I need to strategize about a little bit more is, um, you know, I think we've done a very good job uh, in a bunch of the content we've produced in appealing to people who both play and make games, right? Which I think is a very right. large pool. And I think we need to start thinking about like people who just play games right right? um and and what the what the key differences are there between Mm -hmm. i need to pull that apart a little bit more and think about like what what makes a this is kind of hard for me because i've kind of done the the opposite journey right is like a lifelong person who like plays games you know to gradually like making stuff mm-hmm. myself and like and now being on this team and and continuing to make my own stuff too um and but like what the you know sort of what the what makes somebody because i know a lot of people who play games kind of fancy themselves and very well maybe potential devs you yeah. know that like like we've definitely got people on our team i think who fill 
you know, like that that role. Um, yeah. You know, the people who were like interested in making a game saw what we were doing, were interested in it, and like are now making this game in particular, <laughs> right? Like that's pretty cool. Um, and but so I think that there's there's sort of like three buckets there, right? Like there's people who only play games, right? Yeah. There's people who play and make games, and then there's people who play games that sort of see themselves as like potential devs. Or like devs in waiting, and I that is a hard thing to identify. And I yeah, okay. that's a hard thing to identify. And I think I'm kind of like, you know, there's they're very semi permeable membranes, right, okay. between those three things. And I think that like, as um, you know, and I think this is a good thing, but like as software gets more accessible, and as like game making platforms become more and more accessible all the time, mm-hmm. that middle group is growing, right? The sort of like, like dev potential of any player is expanding all of the time right um so that's you know that's also something that i'm like thinking about and considering and like okay. pulling all of that apart is tricky <laughs> right like from uh from any yeah. kind of targeting perspective yeah i and i don't know anyway i just i i i don't have an answer today I was right. just hoping to talk it through. We do no, all of our fine. talks like that. Yeah, most of um, this is where uh, Evan and I meet most of the time. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, Evan Evan's office is far away, and and aside from, I feel like this is where we get to answer most of our questions and work most of I'm our stuff out. Anyway, doing a shout out for mm-hmm. Vodka Seven Up, who oh, is yeah. also a great game designer, and <laughs> uh, and actually has been. I've been watching Alex. I've been watching your stuff out there. And uh, I'm waiting for you to get on this live stream and, and show yeah. us your game. Uh, so that's exciting. The millions of viewers <laughs> can check it out and also mm-hmm. see. Well, yeah, I, I one of the streams we've done that it was for sure most personally interesting. Um, not that everything isn't interesting, but like watching Alex like make puzzles is super cool so i want to get him back on oh new build is almost done actually well yep. i think we might Bring have it to, over. yeah i think we might have to set you up with a guest stream this week or next and and figure that out you heard it here first everybody yeah. <laughs> alex is gonna, you is don't gonna showcase do pl- a plug or not yet huh? oh yeah uh it's so too spook- spooky, too spooky. Too oh very spooky. good so come here for the jump scares i was reading an article about a virtual reality game that has a heart monitor and a galvanic oh. response test oh, man. that you put on your skin and it will escalate the fear factor of the game until you physically respond well uh, i would if it's a horror game i will respond immediately yeah. like they will not have to <laughs> the like first thing would come out and just be like that done. as soon as it's like there's spooky music and it's dark it's like okay that's it that's yeah. it we don't need to do anything else fine. You're, I... you're like my kids <laughs> i get my, scared now my kids have already learned that like oh something scary is gonna happen and <laughs> right. like the, the 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 foreshadowing drives them insane uh no, that's the, the part I can't handle either. Yeah, like the, the like yeah. anxiety of something bad is coming, but right. we haven't seen it yet. Right. That's worse than having to see it. Three thousand percent correct. Really, absolutely. So I I had a uh, um, a traumatic uh, bungee jumping experience. Um, nothing what? bad happened, but I went bungee jumping. There's only. <laughs> Bad, no, no, experience. No one died. Here I stand before yeah. you. Um, By the way, <laughs> if you didn't die, yeah, that's the bungee jump experience. <laughs> right, like, yeah, you didn't have a unique one. That's no. you went off a bridge yeah, and bounced, yeah, and then came back up and didn't die. Correct. No, so it, it went so okay. fine, right? But my body was convinced I was dying. Right, like there's so here's the thing that I learned: what bungee jumping is is simulating death. Right, <laughs> it just is. Right, uh, and okay. so there's I discovered as somebody who previously like loved roller coasters and like loved intense rides, somewhere my brain was like, "You're safe on this thing that you're strapped into, and it's fine." Sure. Um, it could not register that in I was the, not in the reptilian brain <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the like scared little lizard brain at the base of my skull that like you're not about to jump off a bridge and die right now. Right. Um, 
And I guess a lot of people can't jump, so they for sure had to push me, which is just like, yeah. they have to push most people the first time. It's fine. Um, and it's apparently easier, I disagree, to go off backwards. So they're what? like, stand here, cross your arms, and we'll shove you off this bridge. So they shoved me off the bridge, and I like bounced, and it was fine. Like, uh, right, nothing, traumatic. But it sure, is how you started. This yeah, story. yeah. <laughs> well, I I didn't know it at the time. Like, it was for sure the most scared I've ever been in my entire life. But like, it almost ruined roller coasters for me because like the next time I tried to get on a roller coaster, I mean right. like. I thought I was going to puke like and I, I went white and I started sweating and I like fully had like a full body trauma response. Right. And I couldn't I maybe couldn't do it. Maybe that's my problem. Yeah. Uh, do you I also have, hate roller coasters? I hate roller coasters and my uh, my forebrain. Yeah. And I think my reptilian brain <laughs> are just like, we know how this works. You know, yeah, thousands of people every day. Yeah. My stomach is just, just like. like no. Absolutely. Re- re- rejected. No. You've been poisoned. <laughs> yeah. Is what it is. You've been poisoned. Yeah. It, that's what it does. So it's always funny. just like, oh, equilibrium's yeah. off. Yep. Get her done yeah. out of there. <laughs> Something's and, gone terribly wrong. Yeah. That's oh my, my life. I, my worst, my traumatic experience was <laughs> on a water slide. <laughs> yeah. Which, the water slide? Yes, a oh, corkscrew buddy. water slide in which my stomach was just like, nah. that, that funnel cake from Canada's Wonderland? Bad idea. Yeah. You've been poisoned. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I'm going to rescue you in this tube. Yeah. <laughs> As you shoot through it at a high velocity, ruining the pool for literally everyone. Oh my God, that's so funny. Um, no, what I, what I discovered when I decided to retackle them in a slow exposure therapy kind of way is that like... Did the you going, have to start with the shitty ones? I did. Then... I had to go on like the baby coaster that's like you're in a ladybug. Right. Yeah, right. absolutely. So at Coney Island, I went in the stupid ladybug coaster and I was so like white knuckle scared. Like literally, I mean probably a five-year-old child was on it like me and my partner and these two and they're like kids. oh she's a mom but yeah and i'm just like huh? like it was it was big enough for adults but baby children could ride this and for sure like the five-year-old was like looked at me super concerned and was like it's okay it's a little bit scary but you're fine after i'm like this is what i have become like this infant <laughs> is trying to console me because i'm so stressed out <laughs> Um, but I discovered that it's like, it's the going up I can't handle. It's the like, oh. the, the, as soon as you're locked in and the like this, yeah. I like lose my fucking mind every really? time. Absolutely. Like, I'm so scared. And then as soon as it's, it's fine. As soon as it's moving, it's great. I love it. I'm really? like screaming in joy. I'm thrilled the whole time. <laughs> but this, this, like junk, no, junk, absolutely junk. not. No, 100% no. I'm like... I, like, if there was a button that was, like, launch me into space, get me off this thing, I would push it. Like. So, like, yeah. my invention of, like, just a Mobius strip that is constantly just oh going God. up. Torture device. Just, I would talk. I'd be, like, uh, I'd be like, let's just not even bother. I'll tell you everything. It's okay. Like, <laughs> here are all my passwords. I guess I, won't, <laughs> guess I won't build that. Nope. Then. Yeah, actually, that's a great terrible idea, though, in like the realm of terrible ideas, like a roller coaster that's only that. <laughs> no, you just like we just went in a circle, and then you just get off at the yeah. end. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like the best troll roller coaster I've ever heard in my entire life. Good mm. job. All right. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> uh, so we're making this, a video it, game, by the way. Well, you know, maybe noticed. this fireside chat is on a different topic. Maybe but, it is. Um, this is a lot happening. I mean, you guys are seeing <laughs> like you guys are seeing Aaron's coming oh, in. Oh god, yeah. Doing the like mugu movement and flocking. Mm-hmm. There's a rumor so I have heard that there might be this weird experimental technique of using shaders to uh, oh yeah did you see I, that? Saw, I saw something about this yeah yeah so, with like with like the slender man yeah yeah simulation. that's the simulation but mm. the, you know how it works right can you explain it to me no i don't i don't know how this uh, works at all you, i mean i don't want to unless no. you want to hear it yeah no i'm legit tell me i okay. i'm confused the by the idea is that and I am going to get this wrong. The idea is that you put all the frames of an animation mm-hmm. as separate settings in a shader. 
And so, because oh. uh, a shader can, like these yeah. fire ones, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, for uh, that, that fi this fire okay, is this, like, yeah. uh, like shader stuff where you can change the filters and like right, an imagery yeah. of something. Uh, and so this is just saying, well, instead of like a shader being a, a visual like effect, Right. We're going to just change the orientation of the model. And oh. all the model is actually an aggregate of all of them, but the right. only one that's visible is the one that's in the setting. And, right, the, right, right. and the reason is because they're designed to be able to quickly, like when things light, light on fire, right. you suddenly have like hundreds of shaders that are all changing. Right, right, and right. So the whole system is optimized to have many, many shaders changing at one time. Right. And so what you get is the ability to loop through an animation without the the horsepower right. on the processor in right, the same right. way. For like having the full model. Right, because the full model doesn't change. Oh, right. As long as you can deal with some, I think there's some collision compromises you have to mm. make on that. But point being <laughs> is that somebody threatened to have, what was it, 1,500 yeah, Mugu? 15, yeah, because I was like, show show me the 1,500 right. Mugu. The so second you get this, I that's require That's very video. experimental still. All right. But... In that's, terms of so much work happening, that's the kind of experiments that are going on. That's super I mean, interesting. So we've got Jeff and Maddie who are already part of the stream. Right. We've been trying to get Adrian up here. Yeah, he's, he's very reluctant, but we'll just, see. He doesn't know how many adoring fans mm, are going to have. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yes, uh, this is Alex. Yeah, <laughs> this is a fireside. We are yeah, fireside. Right. It's the, exactly. It's yeah. thematically appropriate. Uh, we will replace it with a even more explosive picture mm -hmm. when we get that mayhem going. Fantastic. 1500 Mugu on screen. But all of them on fire. Oh yeah, well Adrian is our uh -huh. uh, our reclusive celebrity um <laughs> who reclusive celebrity who really just need to have get an themselves eyelash up here. in my eyeball by I the way. I thought you might be struggling there. I am. I'm sorry. Eyelash we, uh... shit itself no, I'm okay. I'll live. <laughs> all right. Be fine. Uh yeah, so there's a ton happening. Yeah. The problem is we need to prep more for these <laughs> fireside chats, just in the sense of like the t the topic. I love how free form they are, but today I was like, you know, apart from saying, I think we need to change it up yeah. with some marketing. I didn't right. bring a ton to the table today, and I apologize to our viewers for that. Right, and I I've been the, at, in New York at a hacker conference, so well, even let's my get into like it. day to day. Oh, are we going to talk about it? Are we going to talk about how? Sure, let's do it. Well, I don't want to deal with the other stuff. The the, <laughs> the the stuff at the hacker conference that we that you and people, I talked yeah. about previously. I want to no. talk about what really the content of the show. Absolutely. Uh, I learned how to, well, saying I learned how to pick locks is not totally accurate. I learned <laughs> officially how to pick locks, which is very exciting. I got my first lock pick kit while I was there. That's always good to cross a border with. Yeah. <laughs> Shockingly, not a problem. Yeah? yeah? You just had it in your pocket yeah. for the millimeter scan. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's right there. Like... Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's a tool under six inches, so it's fine. Okay. Turns out it's fine. But I got yeah. my, my first set of lock picks. I'm very excited don't, about that. Don't pick our locks. I won't. Okay. It's probably fine. <laughs> Good. Uh, that was that was really, really fun. Um, I sort of relearned how to solder, which uh, is not something yeah. I've done in a really long time. Okay. Uh, when I was a teenager, uh, me and a, a guy I dated in high school had like a little side business putting mod chips in PlayStations. So You, you could, were that... I was that kid. <laughs> so he had he had the first CD burner in my school. He had like a just like a two X SCSI drive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he would copy CDs for people, and together we would put uh, a mod chip in your PlayStation. Right. If you wanted. No kidding. So uh, yeah, That's so that a was power very couple fun. Right there. It was right. Yeah, we were very good. Uh, we also imported a lot of anime, which mostly I can give him credit for, but that did also happen. Um, but I hadn't really done any soldering since then, um, and I got a, a Mr. Robot badge, which sort of definitely comes in pieces, and like there's cool add-ons that have to be. And you solder it together. Yeah. And so that's a great brand. Yeah, there's like a whole uh, soldering station, like a 24-hour soldering station that you could just like go and make stuff at. That was really you know fantastic. What? I was excited, uh, like I used to subscribe to 2600. Oh yeah, I was. I was. Emmanuel in. Goldstein was there. Really? Yeah. I was. He's in. one of the organizers. Yeah. Uh, the idea of a twenty-four hour solder station <laughs> just exhausts me. Like, what? 
4 a.m. soldering. I don't know. Yeah, I, it was. I no. I'm here for. It. I'm the, and it's not just that there was a 24 hour soldering station. That I'm pretty sure Mitch Altman just like was there 100 percent of the time. Like I didn't actually see him leave. Um, but there was like there was a lockpick village. There was that space. There was like a chill space that had a bunch of hammocks um, and a bunch of other tables and like whatever. There was a vendors area. But a really lovely thing about the conference is there was like unofficial space or like chosen and curated but open spaces that you could use at any time so people just like hung out and built things and like showed each other stuff and like really? worked on things together a lot yeah it was pretty amazing um there was also in addition to sort of the three major tracks there was a, was a fourth track so you could there's a room reserved so you could sign up and do talks kind of spontaneously style. Yeah, yeah yeah so like a, a fourth track like unconference running parallel the whole time right super interesting really um yeah and it's they, tricky to do that it's tricky to do that um and for not sure not just to present but like tricky as a conference organizer where you're like yeah there's the people that we really wanted to be here right and and then you if you want if yeah. you want to and, and like oh look everyone liked the totally random thing better right you're just like sorry person we flew in right <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it, it's a tricky thing to balance, but I think they did a pretty good job because it was still curated, right? Like you, yeah. you were like, you had to sign up for the thing and there were like, there was someone checking to make sure it was nothing terrible. But if it wasn't anything right. terrible, you could for sure do it. Um, and it had like one of the uh, like least drinky cultures hmm. of any conference I've ever been to. And I think part of that was like, there was always a thing to do Right. That wasn't like hang out in somebody's hotel room and drink. Right. It's like there Let was. Let me tell you the games conferences. Oh, dude, I, I am aware. <laughs> like <Yeesh>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to the point at which half of the mm -hmm. people don't even engage with the conference. They're, right, they just go there and like hang out in the hotel rooms, drinking yeah. in hotels. Yeah, and this was like the opposite of that. Huh. This was like go and go to like a million panels. And like hang out with people in the conference spaces and do things, and I thought that Sounds was really like cool. Good value. It was. Re it really was. Yeah, yeah. And I saw like incredible people whose work I've been admiring for a really long time, like talk about super interesting stuff. And there was also people I'd never heard of before. Like there was there were two um, cryptographers who had just cracked um, the. Uh, the like code for a bunch of encrypted letters that a Italian soldier who had like defected from Italy went over to the UK, like went over to England, then got dropped back into Italy as a like spy and was like radioing, like a yeah, yeah, and then radioing wow. encrypted messages out during like the the um like the the sort of final days of the war, um, and he was supposed to destroy them all, but he kept like when the war was ending, he kept like two or three months of like <laughs> letters so he had like he had thanks like, michael cohen yee. for that one so he had like 75 or 80 letters um wow and, he, and it was enough of a group that they could crack well, it yeah yeah well he was in his 80s and he like got in touch with you know he, this is now like over 10 years ago but he was like i don't remember how to do this anymore like oh, really yeah he's like i was 20 I don't like I've missed some element of like what to do if somebody else can solve these that would be really great because I feel like somebody should have them right. and so there's sort of been this like for a really long time like this uncracked like really? whatever yeah and these two very young researchers like figured it out and it was like they figured it out by looking at dots he had made a bunch of other stuff but like while transcribing to like as little marks for himself and like realizing like oh those are phrase guidelines like he he was like these tiny spots on the page like literally just like a pinprick pen dot but they were like oh. at regular intervals and they're like what if we isolate these as phrases and then turns out that that was, was like true you. yeah yeah like that they that it, wow. that like helped them undo the transposition and that helped them like reverse engineer but super fascinating yeah. so like that was great yeah. That was amazing. That part was amazing. Uh, did Was there anything about 
persistent listening devices in your house? Yes, lots of it. Yeah. So uh, so there was there get, was let's get into it. Oh man, there were there was um there were a few people um who talked about it. One uh researcher, it was uh her talk was on networked totalitarianism. And mm-hmm. one of the her, uh her name is Natalie Marichal. She's really great. And one of the things she talked about was like um It was a lot about like undoing the surveillance state, but a big thing that she like hammered home is like, we're making surveillance devices normal, right? Like just with these like home speakers that you can, that are just constantly listening and recording like all of the time, all of the time. Yeah. Uh, And that this is like, even if they're not doing it now, spoiler alert, they are, but like, even if they aren't listening to you all the time now, like even if that were true. Right you're normalizing having a surveillance device right. in your house uh, right. and they become invisible and that that's like just even having them kind of around and making them pervasive and invisible is itself dangerous thought that was super interesting also like um my partner did a talk on uh on, um, he works uh, at Mozilla on the Internet Health Report, and a thing that he mentioned specifically calling out from the report is um, like the Internet of Things and smart devices, and how like there's what all these toys that have like the worst security in the world because they're all on the network. The thing he called out in particular is this thing called the Pet Cube, which is like a camera and l- Camera, like uh, speaker, two way speaker, and laser pointer that oh, yeah. lets you like I've seen that. yeah yeah that lets you like watch and theoretically play with right you your, can on your phone yeah. you can like move the laser around sure but it's a camera in your house right that records twenty four <laughs> hours a day live streaming and yeah. also has a listening device yeah. in it right yeah <laughs> like. It's a surveillance device that you are putting in your house, right? right? Um, I mean, we... With very bad security. We did a project called Darknet a few years ago. And that really kind of drove it home. We, I mean, our major plot point in that project was uh, a rat. Mm -hmm. And a rat (laughs) stands for, I think, Remote Access Terminal. There's a a, T. Uh, Mm -hmm. Remote Access... They're definitely the RA, and uh, and the idea is that you have pet rats, and what you are doing is finding people with terrible security on these persistent streaming devices, including turning on this webcam yeah. on your computer oh, yeah. in a way that the lights don't come on, so that people don't realize that it's recording, mm-hmm. and you just and you also have control of their screen and their computer, right. and so the game is toying with them like the way that a cat would kind of like bat around and torture a rat it's like i'm just gonna delete one file just a file that i know from my surveillance that you are looking for right but now it's gone and then they freak out and they film them freaking out and then they're like and now i'll put it back and it's right there on and, your desktop, right where it was the whole thing. Yeah, and then the next day, whoa, I can't believe it. And like they're just getting they're just baiting them. Mm. And the the game is not about extortion or anything. It's just right. about what is the best reaction I can get out of this trained animal that I have. Right. And Right. And it, I mean, it just went into Darknet. Just, it's like hand in glove. Right. Yeah. Uh, was, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. But that's a real c- culture that mm-hmm. exists is watching us right now. And, uh, and it's just a very different, like a really sadistic way to treat other people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, now every time my mother needs to troubleshoot her computer, she's <laughs> just convinced that it's right. like the hackers are in. <laughs> it, 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 like, it wasn't me right. that installed All of this sm- malware. Smilebot. Right. Mm. Uh, it was obviously hackers. Right. <laughs> Clearly. When you I didn't... downloaded that e card. Um, <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, the hackers probably it, don't want your mom's computer. Uh, the thing that I continue to be fascinated about is that the majority of hacking is a 
you didn't do your due diligence on setting this thing up in the first place. Anyone right. with any level of expertise mm -hmm. would have told you, don't right. do that. Right. You've built a product that's just open. Right. That's, uh, that's terrible. Th and so hacking is really just finding those and exploiting them for what they are. Right. The other is the human factor yeah. and how much social engineering and uh, just human study that mm. goes into really effective hacking. Yeah. There's a whole, at, at the conference this weekend, there was a, a two hour panel, I think, one or two hour panel on social engineering where um, Emmanuel Goldstein and friends just talk about like what social engineering is and how it works and how to do it. And yeah. sometimes they call people on the phone, you know, to like to demonstrate as a something. demo. Yeah, there's amazing wow. videos that you can look up because they, they live stream and then um, record all the talks. Right. And, uh, and that stuff I find like really fascinating, like that, that there's, um, that there's this, but also like, in parallel with that, so there's like a social engineering panel, super, super interesting. And then um, there's a researcher named uh, Gus Williams who did, or sorry, Gus Andrews, um, who did a super interesting talk on dismantling the hacker mystique and sort of the like inherent problems with like the idea of it the being really hard or it being really hard. And also like um, her focus was in particular, like consent violations as social good that like hackers are sort of like by nature looking to like what is social engineering but like between two people or more right. people coercion yeah a kind of like quiet coercion or like in a very real way getting around a person's security exploits mm -hmm. right and that in a lot of ways especially when it applies to like hardware and software that is exactly what you are supposed to be doing. But when it comes to like building authentic relationships right. with people, having a focus on like trying to get around a human being's security settings, right. not maybe the best way to approach it relating to people. Interesting, like you quality check something where you just take a piece of hardware and you just hammer it at right. every port, every aspect you give it every weird string you can throw at yeah. it because you're just trying to test to see where the flaws are for but sure in a human context that would just be terrible actual torture it would be actually terrible or like you meet somebody and you like talk around them you don't even have to be that mean about it but you talk around them and you t until you find what their weak spots are and then you press on them right? right and if that's the way you tackle every problem if that's the way you sort of treat every interaction because you're sort of like that's just the way that your brain works that can be right. an extremely um like negative way of interacting with other humans and like mm -hmm. treating uh humans different than systems and realizing that like you know there are um you know what is what is like sort of a, a consent-based hacker mindset look like look like was a super interesting conversation like super super interesting conversation wow. which is like in a lot of ways like a lot of what white hat is Right. Like you, you like you have these skills, you decide that instead of like, you know, breaking into people's systems for fun and or money, you're like, well, I'm going to I'm going to show you what these security exploits are so you can guard against them. Like I'm going to mm -hmm. teach you good OPSEC or InfoSec or whatever. Um, and so many people have sort of like gone that route. So right. like, but what how does what does that look like when applied to people? Super interesting. So hmm. a lot of that. Sounds fun. It was super that's fun. That's what you do in New York for fun. That's what I, yeah. That's what, apparently, that's what yeah. I do in New York for fun. I go to a three-day hacker conference and pick locks for a really long time. It's very sounds, meditative. Sounds it's, great. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's really I'll, nice. I'll have to see what hobbies I have. Oh, what hobbies do none. you have, Evan, other than making <laughs> making ridiculous games? Uh, I have been building a bed for my daughter right now. Oh, really? Uh, do, like woodworking straight up or like... I mean, shitty woodwork. <laughs> like, <laughs> sure. Like, like screwing two by fours together, woodworking. Right. Yeah, right. it's furniture crafting. <laughs> Uh, Artis artisanal furniture we, craft. We ordered, we ordered a bank of drawers from IKEA, and then I okay. built a platform bed on top of them. That's and, pretty cool. And that's it. Right and now, I sure. have to go home and finish it, and because she's coming home, that's uh, exciting. But yeah, that's yeah, it is exciting. She yeah. when you're ten, it's pretty. 
That's pretty she cool. She used the word epic, which wow. shows that. <laughs> That's definitely a good thing. As we've seen on the stream, your children are freaking adorable. Yeah. and and I like, enjoyed watching them to no end because oh God, it, was it so did, much fun. It did that perfect turn of like they really did not like the game because they didn't want to hurt anything. Right. And but then and then they went oh this is the way you win yeah, right they, uh, and they can, just you just make more you can yeah. just make more it's fine there's no consequences <laughs> in life come on yeah it's great that's yeah the the turn from like oh i don't that like tentativeness giving way to like terrible glee was a beautiful thing to watch in yeah. real time <laughs> it's pretty great it was pretty great yeah. is it is it is the bed that you have built like shaped like a particular thing yeah it's a giant mugu it's a uh, no. It's a box. Is it? Is it's, it? I don't know. Maybe it's, it's like a, a box I, I on know. top of a drawer. Set. What are kids like? Maybe it's like a Minecraft bed. <laughs> it would be. It would be a great Minecraft bed if you just painted boxes on there you it go. because yeah, it is. Right? Yeah. It is, is a it perfect is? square. It uh, is. A... <laughs> uh, no, it's just a, a bed in the sky. That's pretty cool. And that's that's what it'll be. Uh, so I guess. I don't know if it's so much a hobby as a like thing that I had right. also needed to do because my daughter is turning eleven and I yeah. you know need to need to do something spectacular. So that's cool. That's it. I'll tell you all about my deep dark secrets next time. Okay. But this one, I think we should wrap up. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, thank you once again, everybody, for joining us. Oh, I just want to point out that Wayne has said that he sold lizards when he was in high school. Also extremely cool. So I'm gonna I'm, lizards. I'm gonna end this on a tiny note because uh, uh -oh. the guy that I was uh, like the 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 DM the like uh, dungeon master for the D and D game that I played um, at the very end of high school, um, beginning of university, uh, set up a um, like he had like 15 tanks of amphibians like in his like basement apartment like just. It's exactly what you imagine it was. It was spectacular. Um, and then, like, years later, I'm like, I wonder whatever became of that guy. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't spoken to him since, like, second that, that year. That popped into your head. Yeah, I was like, okay. what? Whatever. Like, I was, I was thinking about what I was talking about, like, um, the, you know, how important, like, various, like, dungeon masters and storytellers and, like, the people who ran our, the games we played in our lives can be to us. Like, sure. um, I was having a conversation. I was like, yeah, this Rob, I wonder whatever, like, happened to him. Like, and I Googled him, and for sure he's running, like, an exotic amphibian and lizard company now that is, like... <laughs> Business is a booming. Yeah. <laughs> he, he imports the finest lizards and salamanders. And I'm like, good for you. You did you, it. You did it. You are living the exact best life you thought you would be living when you were 15 years old. And that and that's beautiful. It's a beautiful and on that thing. note, find your passion there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I think the, the the thesis of this has been really find so, your find your bliss. And so wrapping up. <laughs> All yes. right. <laughs> cool. Thanks everybody. Bye everyone. Bye.